Welcome back to NurseNet Numeracy, the free-to-use online maths tutorial course designed for nurses. In this final part of the intravenous flow rate module of the course, we invite you to test your knowledge that you built up over the past few lessons in answering a number of questions taken from past drugs calculation tests. The format of the test is as follows. We will set a number of questions and we will ask each question individually. We invite you to pause the video as each question is asked and do press play when you're ready to proceed. But we do strongly advise that you take no more than two minutes per question. At the end of the test, we will reveal all the answer in detail and work through all the answers. Best of luck. Question one. An infusion of 1200 milliliters dextrose of 5% is started at 10 a.m. When will the infusion finish if it's running at a rate of 100 milliliters per hour? Give your answer using the 24 hour clock. Question two. Half a litre of fluid is to be given over five hours. What is the infusion rate in drops per minute if the drop rate is 15? Question 3. A female patient is to receive two and a half litres of fluid over 10 hours. What is the infusion rate in drops per minute if the drop factor is 15? Question 4. One unit of blood, 500 milliliters, is to infuse over 4 hours. What is the flow rate if the drop factor of the giving set is 15 drops per milliliter? Question 5. 500 milliliters of Hartman's solution is to be given to a teenager over 8 hours. What is the infusion rate in milliliters per hour? Question 6. A patient receives 50 milliliters of saline in half an hour. What is the rate in milliliters per hour? Question 7. Mrs. Chung is prescribed 550 milliliters of 5% dextrose to run over 6 hours using an infusion set that delivers 20 drops per milliliter. To the nearest whole number, how many drops per minute will you need to set the infusion at? Okay, let's take a look at the answers. Question one, an infusion of 1200 milliliters dextrose at 5% is started at 10 a.m. When will the infusion finish if it's running at a rate of 100 milliliters per hour? Give your answer using the 24 hour clock. Well, in this question and trying to comprehend the question, we should work out that if we divide the 1200 milliliters by the 100 milliliters per hour, that will give us the total number of hours that's required. So 1200 milliliters divided by 100 milliliters gives us 12 or 12 hours. Now we need to put this into the 24 hour clock and we started at 10 a.m. A simple way of doing this would be to merely add the 12 hours on from 10 a.m. So here we have 10 to 11 to 12 to 13 and so on until we get to 22 or 10 p.m. Okay, looking at question number two. Half a liter of fluid is to be given over five hours. What is the infusion rate in drops per minute if the drop factor is 15? Well, thinking back to some of the lessons we've done within this module, we should have identified we can use the drip rate formula, which is the number of drops per milliliter multiplied by the volume of the fluid divided by the time in minutes. So in this question, we've been given the number of drops per milliliter as 15. We've been given the total volume of the fluid as half a litre. Now we will need to convert this into milliliters. 
So half a litre is 500 millilitres. Now we need to multiply them together, which gives us a total of 7,500 millilitres. Now we need to divide it by the time in minutes. We've been given this in the question as five hours. Well, five hours converted into minutes is merely five multiplied by 60, giving us 300 minutes. Now we have all the figures we need to calculate our answer. Therefore, 7,500 millilitres divided by 300 minutes gives us the answer of 25 drops per minute. Question number three. A female patient is to receive 2.5 litres of a fluid over 10 hours. What is the infusion rate in drops per minute if the drop factor is 15? Well, again, in this question, we should have identified that we need to use our drip calculation formula. Number of drops per milliliter multiplied by the volume of the fluid divided by time in minutes. So we've been given our number of drops per milliliter as 15. We've been given our volume of the fluid as 2.5 litres. Now we need to convert this into millilitres. So by using a factor of 1,000, 2.5 multiplied by 1,000 gives us 2,500 millilitres. Now multiply 2,500 millilitres by 15, giving us a figure of 37,500. Now we need to divide this number by the time in minutes. Again, we've been given this as 10 hours. Well, 10 hours converted into minutes is merely 10 multiplied by 60, giving us 600 minutes. Now we've got the numbers to crunch into our formula to give us our answer. So 37,500 divided by 600 gives us 62.5 drops per minute. But we want to round this up to the nearest whole number, giving us the answer of 63 drops per minute. Okay, question number four. One unit of blood, 500 millilitres, is to infuse over four hours. What is the flow rate if the drop factor of the giving set is 15 drops per millilitre? Well, once again, we should have identified we need to use our drip rate calculation formula. So that's number of drops per millilitre multiplied by the volume of the fluid divided by time in minutes. So we've been given the number of drops per millilitre as 15. We need to multiply that by the volume of the fluid, which in this case is 500 millilitres. That gives us a total of 7,500. We need to multiply the 7,500 by the time in minutes. Now, we've been given the time as four hours, so simply convert that into minutes. So four multiplied by 60 gives us 240 minutes. So 7,500 divided by 240 gives us our answer of 31.25 drops per minute. But again, let's round this to the whole number, round it down to 31 drops per minute. Question 5. 500 millilitres of Hartmann's solution is to be given to a teenager over 8 hours. What is the infusion rate in millilitres per hour? Well, compared to some of the other questions in this test, this one's quite straightforward. So let's think about the comprehension of a question. Let's look at the known elements. Well, we know that the patient should be given 500 millilitres and we know it should be given over eight hours. So we know the volume and the time. We simply don't know how much to give per hour. So if we apply a bit of reasoning, we could work out, well, if we divide the total quantity to be given by the total time, it will give us our answer. So let's write this as a fraction. So let's put 500 on the top, the 500 millilitres, and the number of hours on the bottom. So we've got 500 over 8. Well, thinking back to a previous lesson, we looked at the element called common factors because we want to get this fraction down to a more manageable quantity. So if we look for numbers that will divide into both 500 and 8, we can immediately see that we can halve this number by using a factor of 2. Therefore, 500 divided by 2 is 250. 8 divided by 2 is 4. But we can do this again. Let's divide 250 by 2 to give us 125, and 4 by 2 to give us 2. And we can do it yet again to get it even smaller. 125 divided by 2 gives us 62.5. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 
So we've now got 62.5 millilitres per hour, but we want to round this up to the nearest whole number. So our answer is 63 millilitres per hour. Question 6. A patient receives 50 millilitres of saline in half an hour. What is the rate in millilitres per hour? Well, this is a fairly straightforward question again. But let's look at how we comprehend the question and look at the known quantities. Well, we know that the patient receives 50 millilitres in half an hour. What we don't know is the rate in millilitres per hour. So we're trying to calculate a time calculation. So all we need to do in this instance is simply multiply 50 millilitres by 2, since 2 half hours equal 1 hour. So 50 millilitres multiplied by 2 gives us the answer of 100 millilitres per hour. And finally, question number 7. Mrs Chung is prescribed 550 millilitres of a 5% dextrose solution to run over a 6 hour period using an IV infusion set that delivers 20 drops per millilitre. To the nearest whole number, how many drops per minute will you need to set the infusion rate? Well, thinking back to some of our earlier questions, we should have identified that we need to use our drip rate calculation, which is the number of drops per milliliter multiplied by the total volume of solution divided by the time. So in this example, we've been given the number of drops per milliliter as 20, and we've been given the volume of the fluid as 550 milliliters. If we multiply the two together, we get 11,000 millilitres. Now we need to divide that by the time in minutes. We've been given that this must run over 6 hours in the question. So 6 times 60 gives us 360 minutes. Therefore, 11,000 divided by 360 minutes gives us an answer of 30.55 drops per minute. But remember, the question asks us to give our answer to the nearest whole number. So, rounding up to the nearest whole number, our real answer is 31 drops per minute. Now, some of you may have done very well and got all seven questions right. If you didn't get them all right, it doesn't matter. Maths is about, at first, failing and then redoing until we succeed. So, go back and redo it again. If you need to, go back and take the infusion rate course on NurseNet Numeracy. Remember, you can find lots more maths help for nurses at www.nursenet.uk or if you're looking for your next career move in nursing, do check out our jobs board.